Hello everybody and welcome to this video where today we are going to find out why your poetry sucks. Why the stuff you're writing does not feel real. Why the stuff you're writing is stifled as fuck. And how to make your stuff not be shit. And how we're going to do that is we are going to watch clips from a 1994 interview with Allen Ginsberg being interviewed by the twattiest of all twats on the fucking planet who can't even seem to be in the same room with somebody without like completely wanting to just like shit all over them in the nicest way possible with a smile even though we never see this fucking cock knocker's face okay whatever <laughs> i'm like annoyed as fuck but there's a fucking gem in here okay and we're gonna get to it in a minute so let's jump into this with a really clever almost too clever little uh, logo there for a show called Face Ought Face. Just kidding. It's face to face. Um, very clever. Very clever indeed. It's like, what, are the, what do you call those words? Like Otto and Hannah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Pollyanna Drome or something like that. I can't remember what the fuck it's called. Who gives a shit? You'll leave it in the comments. Allen Ginsberg, you are America's best-known poet. You were a key figure of the Beat Generation with Kerouac and Burroughs. Awkward. Now the beard and the hair are trim. You wear a suit and a collar and a tie. Wow, thanks. You brought out a new volume, Cosmopolitan Greetings. But is the real Allen Ginsberg still in there? Well, I'm a Buddhist, and I think the Buddhists would say there is no real permanent self in any case but there are many appearances of self good answer so i'm certainly a beat poet and i'm certainly jewish and i'm certainly gay and i'm certainly an american and i'm certainly a, a practicing uh, meditator and uh, i suppose a part of the counterculture in america which is now under attack by the neoconservative theopolitical uh, televangelists uh, who are um, denouncing the McGovernick counterculture and the threatening war on it. So uh, I don't know if there is a real Allen Ginsberg any more than there might be a real Jeremy Isaacs. You're a oh, member, you say, of the counterculture in the Bohemian. And dude, the guy can't even, like, like ask a follow-up question. It's like he has his next question and he's like, yeah, whatever, you weird old hippie. I'm going to ask my next question, you piece of shit. What a fucking asshole. The New York of New York in the mid 50s. Uh, you lived, you uh, almost grew up in an atmosphere of, of drink and drugs and gay sex and some violence. And gay sex? Dude, it's just sex, bro. Like, you had drugs and gay sex? Like, dude, I swear to God, this dude had to run home and take a shower and call his mommy after doing this interview. It's just sex. Even in 1994, it was just sex. Not was that, that a... much violence? Uh, <clears throat> He's like, yeah, no, there wasn't much violence, we were dude. More anti-war and... I've not been so much involved with violence as in pacifist activity. Boom. But uh, certainly drink. I have friends, some friends drank. I never did. Drugs, I've tried Boom. almost everything, but I'm more of a worker. I honestly think Mr. Isaacs did very poor research. Or he needs to fire the children that he has um, running around. I mean, I'm going to give the guy a little bit of a credit here. Um, we were still a few years away from Google, so he didn't have all of the ability that we have here today but for fuck's sake dude he's like you did this 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 and that and Ginsburg's like no no 
No, I did a little bit, but no. Alexo, I never was addicted to anything except the killer drug, uh, nicotine, which I quit many years ago because I have high blood pressure, among other reasons. But I've had friends who've been in trouble. And friends who there were deaths among your friends and yes. violent deaths among your friends. Some, you? check but, this you know, out. This I think is we funny. Have an <laughs> okay, he's like, but deaths. There were violent deaths among your friends. Sounds like fucking Emperor Palpatine all of a sudden, right? And listen to Ginsburg, dude. Real average above normal. After all, William Burroughs is 80 years old and very productive. Boom. Herbert Hunky, who was, like, say, the original beat personage, is approaching 80 or is 80 already Boom. and still writing and has just been in England, I believe. And uh, Gary Snyder is thriving as a 60-year-old, my, myself. And Philip Whalen the, is now the abbot of the yeah. Hartford Street wow, Zen Center in San Francisco. So, and Peter Orlovsky is... Oh, Peter and you are sitting well. in front of me. And uh, Gregory Corso is around, Gregory writing Corso. as beautifully as ever. Here? But what was the attraction of that so who uh, died? very outre, bohemian lifestyle? Well, you know, Bohemia is a very old lifestyle. You had it in Bloomsbury. You had it in uh, with a mixed sex, of course, in Bloomsbury, which was one of the attractions. That it was possible to be gay without having to be ashamed of it in that in that uh, generation in that community. Bur He's like, how dare you say it's okay to be gay in any generation or neighborhood? I was gay. I was gay. Kerouac was straight. Neil Cassidy, a friend, was straight but willing to sleep with me. So there was a, a sort of a tolerance. Dude, that's so funny. He was straight, but he was willing to sleep with me. The dude was bi. Like, that's hysterical. I love it. What Keats would call negative capability. <laughs> the ability to hold opposing ideas in the mind without an irritable reaching after fact and reason. The key there is irritable. It's sort of a sense of tolerance. It wasn't long before in your poems, in Howell, for example, yeah, you were able and willing to make explicit statements about your sexuality. Yes. Wasn't that very difficult in what was, after all, McCarthy's America? Well, it would have been if I had intended it to be public, but to tell you... Boom. Okay, so here's the thing, folks. This is where I want you to pay attention. I've had a drink, or three or four so we might watch this whole thing and i'll just roast it because that's the kind of fucking guy i am but what i want you to do right now okay this is why the poetry you write sucks balls and not in a fun sexy way but in a goddamn like you're not there yet way this is the reason why this is why you read your stuff and go, God, I just don't think it's... Uh, and then you read people that you really love. And you're like, this is what I want to be doing. This is what I want to be doing. But for some reason, my shit comes out like this. This, what Allen Ginsberg, the story he's about to tell right now. This is exactly why. Well, it would have been if I had intended it to be public. But to tell you the truth, and as I've said before... Howell was written sort of in despair at writing poetry. I figured I couldn't, I hadn't succeeded in writing anything interesting. And so I said, well, then I'll just write writing for myself and I'll forget about any idea of publishing poetry. And so I started writing, uh, I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed my madness. And I went on to catalog a series of uh, almost grotesque, ironic, mocking, serious, sincere, uh, trompe d'oeil psychologically or or mythological gossip that I'd heard of. And, and when it got to my own, got fucked in the ass by handsome sailors and screamed with joy, rather than screamed with pain or agony, I realized how funny it was, but I knew that my father would not want to read that. So from then on, I knew I wouldn't be able to publish the poem. And so I was completely to free, completely free to write anything I wanted. And if you, if you, if you don't show anybody, you, you can do anything you want. <laughs> That's the funny part. That's, which is why the poem is good, because it was written for my own privacy. Uh, later on, people saw the manuscript and liked it, and then I gave a reading in which I thought would be like a small private uh, arty reading in a small uh, art gallery with other poets, Kerouac and uh, Gary Snyder, among others. 
and, and everybody liked the poem, so I said, well, I guess it's all right then. But then I still was hesitant to publish it because of my, I didn't want my father to read the gay, explicit imagery. But finally I sent it to him, and he wrote me back a very interesting letter, he, Louis Ginsburg, being a poet, saying, this is a great poem full of energy and uh, exuberance, uh, but do you need all those blue words? <laughs> uh, so I explained to him, well, the, the way it passed through my head, and he got used to it. So what I want to kind of hammer home right now on this is that Allen Ginsberg, who is considered by a lot of people to be the like quintessential American poet of the last, I don't know, the last half of the last century. Okay. He thought he was failing at poetry. And he decides, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to write something for me that I'm never going to publish. And he let it all out. He fucking cut himself and bled on that fucking page, dude. He let it pour out. After doing that, thinking that this would never get published, one, because he was afraid what his family would think, and he just didn't think it was good enough, but it was good enough for him. Some of his friends read it, thought it was fucking brilliant, and that made him feel pretty good. And then he read it at a little event. And the funny thing is, this little event was kind of a big deal. And he kind of buried that there. Because um, if you remember that... Um, Allen Ginsberg, Ferlinghetti, um, Poetry USA documentary that we did the watch along with. Like, maybe I'll post it up there or something like that if you haven't seen it. Like, someone made a painting of all of these people. He was describing the actual reading because all of these beat poets, like, none of them really had been published. And they're like, why don't we, like, put on, like, an event where all of us, like, get together and read our poetry. And it was, like, the who's who of the fucking movement, okay? And fucking um, Kerouac was there in attendance. There were a bunch of other people in attendance, including fucking Ferlinghetti, okay? Who, like, asked to see... The manuscript after hearing him read that night he's like well I, I i guess like here you go again thinking that nothing's gonna come from this and then ferlinghetti wants to put it out and then it becomes one of the like biggest selling books of poetry of or at least american poetry ever it's like i i can't express like what a huge fucking deal that was and the whole thing was because he decided that he wasn't a very good poet and he was just gonna write for himself whatever the fuck he wanted that's it that's why your poetry sucks because you're afraid to write whatever the fuck it is you want to write. You are writing for other people. You are not writing for you. So this week just is a challenge. If you've never done it before. Write whatever the fuck you want. Just for you. Be as crass as you want. Be as filthy as you want. Be as mean-spirited as you want. Or not. Okay? But whatever it is you're doing, do whatever the fuck you want to do for you and no one else. Write something that no one else will ever fucking read. And then decide if you want other people to read it. But just remember that you're writing for you and no one else. And that is the difference. That is seriously the difference maker here. Okay? 
as of right now, I still only have one more copy of Abnormal Brain. By the time you see this, fuck you, my next chapbook will probably be out already. Um, the next Blood Rag will be out. And um, if you are around the LA area on December 2nd, and you would like to be one of the 20 people who are going to come to this little room I'm in to hear me read some of the poems out of Fuck You, hear Adam Crawford read, and another special guest who will be named um, shortly, um, and just party with us, then fucking hit me the motherfuck up. Join the Anarchy Crew, type hard everybody, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.